Hi, my name is Adam. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to go through another bonus video on CPP. So we've done a whole five video series on CPP, um, how it works, when to take it, the break-even point, and different times when you can take it, 60, 65, 70, and the benefits of each one. So if you haven't watched those, all those links are below. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure to click the subscribe channel and also the notification bell. Uh, we release at least two videos every single week around financial planning, retirement planning, estate planning, saving taxes, helping you save more money and retire in a better situation. So today we're going to talk about the child rearing provision when you go to apply for your CPP. So the number one thing, and I'm going to start with this, is with the child rearing, if you think you qualify for this, you need to apply for it. It is not a default benefit when you get your CPP benefit. So you'll qualify for the child rearing benefit if you had a child after December 31st, 1958, if you had low to little to no income um, for any child under the year of seven, so you had some years where you were raising kids under the age of seven, and you qualify for the Canada Child Benefit. So those are the three factors we want to look at to be able to apply and get approved for the child rearing provision to allow years where you had low to uh, little income um, to be erased off of your CPP, essentially history, to be able to increase the total benefit you're going to get from your CPP payments. So how does a child rearing provision work? Essentially what happens is you get credits for the years that you were at home, again, with little to no income while raising children under the age of seven. Okay, so those credits are gonna be applied and they're, if they're more than what you actually paid into CPP, then the credits will be used, okay? And the credits are used on the five years leading up to when you had children. So that will come into play as well, but essentially you get credited back for years that you stayed at home and raised children under the year seven. Now, it's for kids under seven. So if you had a child, let's say in 2000, and again in 2005, then you would go all the way from 2000 to 2012 um, to be able to apply for that benefit. So again, because you had children under the age of seven from 2000 when you had your first child, if your second was born in 05, you have seven years from your last child. So there's a big time frame where you can apply to have credits back on your CPP benefit. And again, you must apply for this benefit. It's not a default benefit. The general dropout provision or the general dropout is something that you don't have to apply for. So that's when they basically take the 17% or the lowest 17% of um, contribution years out of your CPP calculation. So that's automatic, but the child rearing years is not automatic. So make sure those are the two biggest factors when kind of bumping up your CPP payment, taking out kind of the bad years. So the general dropout, which is 17%, of your lowest years or credit years or credit months, that's automatic. But the child rearing years, if you qualify, you need to make sure you apply for that. Now, I wanna highlight one uh, quick point before we jump off this video is that even if you're already collecting your CPP and you thought, oh shoot, I forgot to apply for child rearing or I never knew I could qualify, it's not too late. So if you're already collecting your CPP, you can still qualify for this benefit benefit. So again, we'll put a link below, but if you go to My Service Canada, there'll be a child rearing provision application that you can still fill out and then get the adjusted payment moving forward. So again, thanks for joining us in this short video today. We had a lot of feedback asking about the child rearing provision. So we just want to highlight the key points on that. So again, you need to make sure you apply for it. It's basically when you were at home making little to no income for kids under seven years old. So those are the two key factors that come into it. And being able to have those years where you have little contribution to your CPP kind of wiped off the book or credited back to you, it's going to allow for your CPP benefit payment to be bumped up. So when you log into your My Service Canada account and you see your projected um, CPP payment for 65, if you have years where you were raising kids and paying little to nothing into CPP, your age 65 benefit will actually be bumped up a bit once you apply for CPP and get those child rear and provision years uh, credited back onto your CPP benefits. So again, thanks again for joining us for the CPP bonus video. We're gonna do more of these as time goes on. If you have any more questions about CPP and some of the ins and outs of it and, and things like child rear and provisions, leave a comment below on more videos you like to 
us to put out just to help educate you because I guarantee you that the questions you have uh, are not alone. So there's many people that have emailed us about the child rearing provision, hence why we did this video. So make sure you comment below on what videos you'd like to see around CPP or anything else. And we'll try uh, get those done for you, put them in the pipeline and get them out as soon as possible. So thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.